and then the floor is yours, Thierry. Uh, thank you, uh, Ruben, for the introduction. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this uh, Veeam Partner Academy. Uh, on the call is also uh, Stan uh, from uh, Stan Margaret, who is a sales engineer of, uh, of Veeam. He will be monitoring the chat, so if you have any questions during uh, you can also put it in the chat and uh, stay as monitoring the chat. Uh, if it's an interesting question, uh, he will uh, uh, put it in the, in the call uh, itself. Um, so welcome everyone uh, to this uh, Veeam Partner Academy <clears throat> about uh, freshly released, uh, last, uh, last week released uh, Veeam Backup for uh, Microsoft 365 uh, version 6. Um, the focus will be on the main uh, new uh, features, uh, two big features even. Uh, but before we go to the new features, uh, first, a few words, of course. Uh, we all know that the Microsoft 365 business is, is a big business, um, quite a lot of customers, a lot of users, so a very great uh, potential market for uh, selling Veeam backup for uh, Microsoft 365. Um, but the biggest reason is why uh, should we uh, sell a backup or a disaster recovery solution or what you want to call it uh, to uh, your customers for Microsoft 365 because it's your data. Um, so uh, uh, Microsoft will give you some features or functionalities within Microsoft 365 to, uh, let's say, keep the systems up and running. And that's their responsibility uh, to have the systems up and running. But the data within the software uh, is your, uh, let's say, your responsibility, your problem. Uh, and there are quite a few reasons why uh, we would take a backup, although it's in the cloud, maybe redundant, uh, geo or something, but that we still want to have a backup um, uh, of our data. The, the, the biggest one is accidental deletion. Uh, so the hum let's say the human error, uh, a user simply deleted something um, and uh, he, he needs it back. Um, there is also the retention policy confusion gaps. Um, so yes, there are some retention policy policies within Microsoft 365 of uh, I deleted the mail, it goes to my uh, my bin, and then after a certain amount of time, uh, it goes away there or it stays there, depending on, on how you set up the policy. But uh, uh, there is quite a lot of confusion there on uh, how long does my data, even if I deleted it, stay in, um, stay in the, 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 the environment, let's say, uh, uh, or uh, when is it gone? Um, and that's uh, posing a lot of problems for uh, some people. So having an external backup uh, is, a, is a nice thing to have there too. Um, next one, internal security threats, uh, not all, let's say hackers or uh, malicious people or malicious intents come from the outside. Uh, some uh, come from the inside, uh, let's say spies who infiltrate in the company, but also departing employees who are not on the best foot leaving the company, uh, could have some malicious intent uh, on leaving the company to do some harm to the company or simply steal data or uh, whatever their intent is. Of course, we have the well-known external security threats. Uh, people try to get your data or uh, ask money, uh, ransomware, ask money to for you to get your data back because uh, they deleted it. There is, of course, a whole lot of uh, legal and uh, compliance requirements. Uh, some some branches or some some companies really need to have their data available for a certain number of years uh, to be able to, if there comes a question from whatever uh, government or uh, legal authority uh, to provide them some backup as a proven court cases or whatever. And it can be quite costly if you can't provide the data at that moment, they ask. Um, managing hybrid deployments and migrations. Um, 
it's a nice thing on uh, the solution of Veeam uh, because yeah, the product is named uh, backup for Microsoft 365, uh, but it also supports uh, your local exchanges, uh, your local uh, SharePoints uh, as a source or a destination of the restore. Uh, so we can really say we can use our product here uh, as a method of doing migrations from an unsigned exchange solution, let's say, to our uh, new subscription in Microsoft 365 uh, by simply making a backup of the local data, restoring it into Microsoft 365, or just way around. Uh, you're fed up with the subscription costs uh, of Microsoft or the, the rise of them. Uh, and you could simply backup your data in my, Microsoft 365 and export them to an on-premise solution or uh, whatever uh, you want to do with the data at that moment. And of course, uh, the team's data structure, uh, which was a problem in the beginning. Uh, you could back up the, back up, uh, the data from uh, teams, but not the structure, but that's solved. Uh, so you can have the complete structure now uh, within your backups of, uh, with Fiend Backup for Microsoft 365. Uh, the reasons uh, that's from a, a, a research uh, done by uh, hybrid and multi-cloud research by Veeam. Um, so the reasons why uh, companies say they are uh, doing backups. Uh, so and you see the, the same seven reasons coming back. Uh, uh, the uh, accidental deletion and so on uh, of your uh, data. Um, a lot of companies, it's, it's a potential market uh, or, the, or the market potential for backup for Microsoft 365 is, is a huge opportunity because a lot of companies still don't have a protection there. Um, uh, either they didn't think about it or uh, they think Microsoft is, is doing everything for them. Uh, and again, there, Microsoft will do everything to keep your or keep the systems, the solution up and running. Uh, but the data within the solution is your data. So it's your responsibility. They won't do uh, a lot for that, uh, to protect that. So um, there is still a huge opportunity uh, to sell the product to your customers and uh, set up a good uh, data protection solution for them. Uh, Retention policies, uh, another thing that a lot of companies uh, really need uh, three or more years uh, of a retention policy uh, for legal or whatever reasons. Uh, so uh, great opportunity there also. Uh, Veeam Backup for Microsoft Office 365, we're at uh, version six at this moment. So it's not a new product, uh, it already has a shown its benefits and its, 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 its effectiveness uh, to a lot of customers, uh, but it's, it's a backup solution for uh, Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, OneDrive, and the complete Microsoft Teams, not only data, but complete Teams uh, structure there. Uh, and of course, like we said, with the migration topic, um, it does not only do Microsoft 365, but it does also do is the same, or it can do the backup of the same products on premise, you know, uh, for migration purposes or uh, whatever. Uh, it's one product. One of the biggest new or uh, asked for uh, new features um, within the product is a self service restore port. Um, there were already a few partners who made something uh, by themselves using the REST APIs and so on. Uh, but now it's a, it's a Veeam provided uh, self-service portal, uh, a restore portal. Um, quite easily to install, I, I have to say, with a few clicks, uh, you can enable it. Um, and um, yeah, it just automates uh, some simple tasks for users. Um, things that uh, 
yeah, your customer or an end user could do by himself. I accidentally deleted a mail. Uh, well, you can give him access to the self-service restore portal. You can search for the mail himself and simply restore it. So for those basic tasks uh, where an IT admin uh, loses quite a lot of time uh, and it's not of a high uh, business value. It's a high value for the for the the, the, the user, let's say, but uh, it's uh, uh, it's it's not of a great value for, to the IT admin. So um, so it auto it's it's kind of automation and scalability feature. Uh, you, there can be more done by the user. Time saving for especially your IT crew. And enhanced security, it's, it's multi-factor enabled if you want. Uh, so uh, it's a secure way to access, uh, yeah, and do the restore for by user itself. Uh, um, one location and give restore access directly to the user uh, for whatever is backed up from his data. Um, also, new is a backup copy uh, to low cost object storage. Um, so uh, you could already do a backup to object uh, storage, but now you can have a secondary copy on a, a different uh, platform, for instance, uh, an archive platform of object storage uh, at low cost for the long-term uh, retention. Um, so it's an extra, uh, safety matter uh, to have a second copy. Uh, we, we see it with all the other backup uh, utilities or backup software uh, where we try to adhere to the three to one rule and um, three copies of our data to separate location then on different media and so on and test it uh, also uh, for the other backups. Um, it creates a separation, different provider probably. Uh, and it saves money because the copy and the Veeam solution always goes to uh, archive object storage, which is, means that it's cheaper to write to, uh, but it's really an archive. So um, it shouldn't be the data that you really say, I need to restore from it, but it's more for a, a, yeah, a, a legal uh, thing that uh, we have the data. It will cost a little bit more than, uh, than other storage to retrieve, uh, but the chances that we have to retrieve something from there is really, minimal, just in case of, yeah, let's say, legal or uh, other uh, compliance rules. And if we can't retrieve it at that moment, it will cost us more than uh, the cost of retrieving it from the, from the archive uh, tier, let's say. Uh, it's quite easy to set up. It's uh, just adding uh, a little VMark to our backup job and uh, specifying the the object uh, repository where we want to uh, make a copy to. Uh, just to give you an overview of the architecture, uh, so uh, what we can protect. Uh, of course, we have two parts on the left side. We have the online, the Microsoft 365 part, uh, where we can protect the Exchange Online, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Microsoft Team fully. Uh, but also on premise, we can uh, support the uh, Exchange on premise or the SharePoint on premise. The first backup, we can do it to uh, object storage, like S3 or S3 compatible, Azure Blob, and IBM Cloud. Or we can do it on a on premise uh, local storage, uh, whatever you want. Maybe a, a quick remark for those who don't know uh, the product yet. Uh, keep in mind that if you go to an uh, object storage, uh, uh, repository, you still need uh, to foresee a cache repository on your uh, feedback for Microsoft 365 server, and it will take up approximately 1% of the uh, storage on the object storage, just for the metadata to know what data is where and to ease uh, yeah, the restore of it, the retrieval of it. Uh, of course, you can also have on premise object storage. Then quite easily now uh, in the new version of the software, we can do a backup copy job. Um, and the backup copy job is limited at this moment to really archiving uh, object storage. So the S3 Glacier, uh, S3 Glacier uh, Ar Deep Archive and the Azure Archive. And of course, uh, 
what would the product be without a, a recovery possibility? Uh, we can recover with uh, the explorers, uh, which is something familiar to people who are already using feedback and replication. It's, it's the same explorers approximately we use. So we have an theme explorer for Microsoft Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Teams, where we can, like, uh, yeah. Uh, a folder wise uh, browse through the data which we have and then simply select the data we want to restore and uh, we have a lot of possibilities there too uh, because uh, if you look at the possibilities we have approximately 45 ways to do a restore for every bit of data but uh, we can restore it on the same location a different location export it as a yeah, as an attachment or a, as, a, as a file simply so um, they're quite extensive restore possibilities um, uh, for uh, your data. That's one of the reasons we can also uh, use it a little bit as a, as a migration tool. Um, one of the things um, that isn't in the presentation, but uh, for the partners can be interesting is uh, if you are a Veeam service provider also, um, there is also a new feature that uh, now you can connect your uh, Veeam backup of Microsoft 365 uh, to the uh, Veeam service provider console. Um, and from this moment on, uh, with the version 6, you can manage the license uh, from your service provider console and also uh, use it the direct link we have uh, for reporting usages. So there is no manual reporting necessary anymore uh, for the uh, backup 365 uh, version 6. Um, this is uh, to give you a small look and feel of the backup environment. In fact, this is the user interface of uh, Veeam Backup for Microsoft 365 uh, for people who already work with um, <coughs> With Feedback Backup and Replication it will look familiar, I would say. Um, but we have still uh, the organization, uh, let's say, the first step. Uh, it's multi-tenant software. So if you have multiple uh, customers as a service provider, or if you have multiple uh, organizations within Microsoft 365, you can add them all within the one tool. Um, Backup infrastructure. Uh, this is where we create the uh, backup repositories and the backup proxies. Um, <clears throat> just a little bit like uh, with the backup verification uh, regularly. Um, so, if you want to use the backup copies, uh, you need an object storage repository, of course, and one of the archive types. But I don't have a subscription at this moment for it. Um, so I can't show you that one. Uh, we have the backup repositories. This is my local backup repository on uh, my local portable here. Uh, and of course, the backup proxy. A nice thing for the installation also, which has changed with version six is that, um, uh, Let's say it's a one-click install. Uh, previously, you had, you had a few components to install, but now uh, with one install, you can install everything on the same machine with one click, let's say. <clears throat> uh, and of course, we have the history tab where you can see what has been done uh, previously. Um, creating a backup job uh, is quite simple. Uh, you simply click backup job. Let's say you make it test. You say which items you wanna or users you wanna do a backup of. Uh, let's just take one for the demo purposes. Then next, you could if you took a whole bunch of users or a group, uh, you can simply also exclude them with just one user. That's also a possibility. You select the backup proxy you want to use in the backup repository. And then you have a, a shadowing uh, option, let's say. And if you would have object storage here below, you could say also create backup copy of this job. 
what you can't do here is uh, specify a retention policy. It's something by design, it's like that uh, within the product. A retention policy, you specify that one within the backup repository. So uh, if you go to a backup repository, here you specify the retention policy. So it's the backup repository to where you do the backup that will uh, provide the retention policy settings. So if you want to do like a different retention policy for a different backup job, you will have to use a different uh, backup repository to do it. Another thing I wanted to show you is uh, the restore portal. Uh, this one is also installed. As this is the portal, how it looks. I don't didn't enable because it's local uh, boot factor authentication for the demo, but uh, you simply can log in. as a simple user. And then as a simple user, I could simply go to uh, browse through my mailbox, for instance, uh, and let's say I simply deleted whatever mail with a simple click here. I can say restore. Next choose to the original location. So restore it within my uh, inbox, or I could choose uh, an, another location just for the demo purposes. Let's say, give it a reason for the log files and then simply click finish. And we see that it is already successfully restored. I'm not sure, Stan, if there are already some interesting questions or something worth mentioning. Hey, Thierry, if I'm not mistaken, you can hear me. Yeah, we hear you. <laughs> so that works. Um, so I discovered the unmute button. So there was a question about a specific, very specific question on the uh, Teams account. What is the required permissions? Well, actually, I did a copy paste in the chat. Uh, and that was specific for the part of the teams, and that is actually in the user guidelines. So that, that's a document that nobody reads, by the way. <laughs> um, it's also documented on the help center. So there is a list of, of the required permissions. It's worth looking for. Um, there was a secondary question, which was not bad uh, neither. Um, it was, uh, well, I do a backup, just like you do, by the way. You back it up straight to disk, not to object storage. And um, he mentioned, is it possible to copy paste that data onto a, for instance, if it's a small installation, the USB drive, and then run away with the USB drive in case of an emergency, so everything breaks. Is it possible to restore from there? Well, if you have, again, a new server and reattach that as storage or copy it over, it's best to copy it over. Uh, well, basically, it's a JetBlue database in the scene behind, so it will be recognized and it will be known. By the way, and there are a lot of people that do not know that, if you want a secondary backup and you do the backup straight to disk, so not to object storage to the cloud, then there is still the possibility to um, take a backup of the machine, so the, the VBM machine with VBR, for instance. And within VBR, you still have the capability of launching those explorers, by the way. So you can browse through the data in the backup from a backup, which is quite fancy. Um, but only if everything is on the disk, of course. Um, so I provided the article as well. Um, and somebody else asked something about the Veeam Service Provider Console. And that's something that I do not touch on a daily basis. So that's pretty hard for me to answer. 
Uh, I'm pinging a colleague, but he is in a meeting, so he's not replying at the moment. Um, there is not a VPN required. There is a connection required, but I thought it's, uh, it's an SSL connection also. Yeah, it's possible. And there's two possible. need to talk to each other. That's for sure. Otherwise, there is no possibility to to yeah. make uh, backups with the points given uh, with VCSP. But there is no separate. Uh, in fact, for nothing with a service provider console, uh, there is yeah. an external VPN necessary. It's always done through an SSL uh, link uh, from uh, between the V products themselves. Yeah. And then there is a very, very good question of Steven, by the way. Uh, I did not re yet receive my version 6 download, uh, or it did not pop up yet in... in um, M365, that's true. So what it's still a manual action at this point. So after I think a few weeks or a month or two, we push the new version, version six to, to the consoles and then you have to more or less update. So you will see that uh, annoying thing popping up in, in the right bottom. But at this point in time, you still need to go to the website, theme.com, download the software from there. And does it work straight from V5 to V6? When Thierry launched, because I'm, I mean, a timing issue uh, at the moment, uh, my agenda is overbooked. Um, at the moment, Thierry launched his, uh, his presentation. I actually did the download and the installation. So it, if you have V5 installed and you do the update, the update is done in, oh, I think, three or four minutes. So uh, it was a lame excuse for me for, for uh, not doing it at the moment. So it goes pretty fast. And the rest of the questions I still need to read. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, one of the things I, I didn't mention during the demo also is uh, there is a report part within uh, the Veeam console. So uh, if I go to here, uh, organizations, you still have the reports also mailbox protection, storage consumption, license overview. Uh, which can be nice to have a look at also. Um, the storage consumption uh, simply shows yeah, how much storage is used. Uh, uh, I just did a small backup, so it's, it's, it's quite easy. But here you see, and also you see the growth over, over time um, available. license overview is uh, also, I just did a backup of two users. So at this moment, I only have two, two licenses used because the backup for Microsoft uh, 365 is user based license. So you're not obliged to, yeah, to have for every user a license uh, if you don't backup their mailbox, their data. Uh, there's one but um, if you want to back up team sites or SharePoint sites where uh, yeah, all users have access to internal, uh, then you need the license for every user. Uh, that's a difference. And then, um, of course, we have the mailbox protection. Uh, just shows how much mailboxes, uh, how many mailboxes of your total subscription are protected, which are unprotected, and so on. So uh, it's quite easy to see if you forgot a user in your environment or not, or which users you forgot, or if it's really not necessary to do a backup of those users. And then quickly. In the meanwhile, Thierry, while you're searching for the next thing, so there is a one, someone who actually did that about the backup repository. I would like to have some kind of a retention policy, keep forever, except for the deleted items older than X age. Um, I already suggested it in the chat. It's an excellent suggestion. Drop it in the forums um, as a new feature request because it's a nice one. However, you can exclude by default the, the deleted items, the junk email and stuff like that by 
It's like on the top left on the hamburger menu uh, in general options uh, to be excluded or to be included. And by default, it's excluded, I think. Um, but starting from a specific age, it's not possible yet. So suggested in on the forum, perhaps the well, the next version, it is there. Indeed. Um, maybe Stan, uh, if you don't have the possibility to install a test, you want to see how it looks or how it's done uh, through the user interface, something uh, Stan created is the click through demos. Uh, uh, I forgot to mention them in the presentation, Stan, but do you know the URL by heart or? Yeah, it's it's my own URL, so I registered it. <laughs> it's kind of easy for me. Well, basically, it's a www.veemclick.be, and that's basic. I dropped it in the chat. So indeed, over there you can go to a website, and it provides you the ability both for VBR stuff and VBO stuff. Um, the complete installation of VBO is in there. So I wanted to prove that it is possible to install VBO at that point in time, VBO, or VEBM in this case, um, to install it completely in less than 15 minutes, including the configuration of your first backup job. It is doable. Perhaps you have to be a little bit trained. It's vimclick.be, Thierry. Okay. So, um, and over there, indeed, I tried to, at least I tried to, uh, to drop, um, to drop the, uh, betas of v12 as well in the near future so um, v12 is coming up uh, pretty soon well definition of soon we never know but uh, in the end that's it and so over here i dropped it earlier on of the beta v6 um, so it's outdated already uh, i still need to update everything and all the the, the things but over here you can see on, on on the left side for instance on the screen how to install VBO completely, add an organization, add a repository. So doing the basic stuff, nothing fancy. And on the right side, how to restore out of it. So that self-service restore portal, both for a stupid end user that is doing its own thing, or a key user, just like the help desk, who is doing the stuff for somebody else, uh, will be documented later on. But as I mentioned, I have kind of a time constraint. Uh, Another, and another website maybe uh, that not everyone knows is the best practices website, which is dp.b.com slash VBO. Am I correct? Yeah. Um, you have it for VBR also, uh, but it gives you some best practices uh, for uh, configuration, designing your environment uh, and so on. Uh, quite a good read through uh, if you, are in the planning phase of installing uh, the product, I would say. Other questions still coming or? I don't know, Stan, if you want to add something to the Veeam backup for Microsoft 365 part uh, or? Oh, not directly from my part. I see people are still active in the chat, which is great, by the way. Uh, um, perhaps it's worth mentioning, perhaps uh, it's worth mentioning that the, um, the ability to have the self-service restore portal for end users, if you're storing directly in object storage, might not be the best choice to be used. Yeah, it, for me, in my point of view, it's more important to have them assigned to operators or the key users. And why is that? Because if you're using small files, it doesn't matter so much. But if you're using, like you're in a video editing company, for instance, and so everything is stored on OneDrive and SharePoint. So it's backed up and being stored in object storage. If you have really annoying end users that have the uh, annoying habits as well to delete the data and then search themselves in the backups and then restore the data. So you got 200 megabytes going off the line from object storage, which means egress traffic 
that shall be charged by Microsoft, uh, Amazon, or another uh, object storage provider. So watch out with it. If you have ob operators, so key users like the help desk that are going to do it for them, well, at least they keep track of it. The end user requested at one time. Well, now it's requesting again. Perhaps we should train the end users not to delete so often their stuff uh, because the download would cost money. So this, watch out with that. So perhaps uh, enabling it only for key users might be a, a common best practice in the, in the near future. Absolutely great recommendation. Um, good question, Chris. Can we access the data also when we back up to hard disk? Yes, it's a self-service restore. Um, and then Steven is trying to refine what was unclear for me. So, uh, okay. And I'm still not getting it. Sorry, but perhaps ping me directly, uh, Steven. Ah, changes to PowerShell and comments. Um, well, um, there are just additions. Yeah? So everything is API based and then we build the GUI around it. So this is the, the opposite way how VBR was working in the past. Um, so there will be only new comments, new CMD, that's new PowerShell. So API stack is a lot bigger than, than it used to be. Uh, certainly in regards with the uh, um, the the whole uh, restore portal so it can can be uh, can be a mind change uh, when an end user restores can we see that in retrieve the retrieve is for the archive so that will remain in console if i'm not mistaken and but we didn't show that yet but the retrieve and, and thierry mentioned it as well the retrieve from an archive purpose is really coming from a long distance. Yeah, you have to see like, now we're backing up to, for instance, blob and then deep archive blob is the second tier. Well, if you do a retrieve from that archive tier, well, it is documented in the Veeam click how to retrieve that data from the beta. But it took, if you take a very close look at the timing, it took more than uh, an, an hour to fetch the data. And I think it was about two emails. So watch out, it's really to store for legal purposes and, and then you have it available and then you can start browsing it and to restore it. So watch out with it. Yeah, if, if a user restores something through the self-service portal, it also shows up in the restore of the, in the history part, in the restore, it also shows up. Um, what has been restored and you see as a restore operator, the, the user itself. So that's a way to see what uh, users are doing through the uh, self service portal. Sure, if there are still questions coming in, but uh, there was a yeah, I would say that concludes a little bit the part of the beam backup for Microsoft 365 uh, v6. Uh, what's new? There was a small addition uh, to the agenda, uh, and it's more you should see it as a, as a reminder uh, because there are some big changes coming on in uh, at the end of June uh, this year uh, by Veeam point of licensing it's not not technical uh, but at the end of june uh, we must stop selling everything which is perpetual license by cpu um, so everything will change at that moment uh, the only thing you can sell in fact is uh, veeam universal licenses so keep that in mind that um, please even for new customers at this moment although you can still sell them um, yeah let's say veeam backup better application uh, by CPU, consider selling them directly the universal licenses. Because although they can still buy new licenses, 
as of the end of June, uh, they can't buy anything anymore of new CPU or upgrades or whatever. So um, a customer who has CPU licenses who want to add one CPU will have to do migration to Veeam Universal licenses and then add eventually uh, extra low uh, instances if they need it. Um, also a customer who wants to upgrade, uh, they still have an essential standard and want to go to enterprise, no longer possible will be a migration to Veeam Universal licenses. And then at that moment, you're on the Enterprise Plus uh, level of features. The only thing an existing customer will still be able to do is a renewal. So no additional grades, no uh, extra CPUs, but a renewal of their existing environment by CPU will be possible. Uh, and no longer for four or five years, just up to maximum three years at this moment. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, there will be uh, some migration there. I think there will be still quite a lot of uh, webinars by Veeam and, and sessions done by us also, um, considering migrations and the changes. But keep in mind that uh, as of the end of June, no longer CPU uh, licenses sold. Uh, uh, for uh, the backup application of uh, licenses. Uh, another thing I want to mention is um, a good mix CPU and Veeam Universal licenses. But at that moment, um, if we're talking about the vSphere or Hyper V environment with virtual machines, the CPUs will always and the only the CPUs will be used uh, to do the backup of your virtual machines. And all the instances you bought for it. Universal license will be used for anything else. Uh, so you can't say I need an additional CPU. Okay, then that's no longer possible. I will simply buy 10 instances and use those instances to do the back of both the virtual machines who run on the extra server CPU. That's not possible. If you're talking about virtual machines on Hyper V or, or a vSphere environment, we will only use CPU model there if you mix them. Uh, and the flow will be used for anything else. So uh, keep that in mind. It will, if you want an extra CPU as of July, it will be first a migration to the universal licenses and then uh, expansion. That's the only thing I wanted to say about as a, as a big reminder. So uh, focus on flow, I would say. Um, don't sell. CPU new licenses as much as possible because uh, if something changes after July, it will be back to the customer, propose a migration, do the migration, and then uh, we can expand again. Uh, so that was in short a reminder for uh, the June changes. I don't know, Stan, if there are still other questions coming in or seeing well. Or, or everybody is satisfied, or everybody asked that question. So I think it, uh, that was it. Mm -hmm. Nobody dropped anything new yet. So. Let's hope it's a, it's a satisfaction uh, sign. <laughs> then. Okay. Um, thanks, Thierry, uh, for the great presentation. And thanks, uh, Stan for uh, answering all the questions uh, during the presentation. Um, yeah, um, and also a big thanks to all of you for uh, joining us today. Um, yeah, according to the questions uh, and the interaction, I think the content was uh, pretty uh, relevant and useful for you guys. Um, next week, um, I will uh, send over uh, the slide deck um, and the link to our TD events uh, webpage uh, where you can um, yeah, view the recording of the session of today. Um, and if there are no um, additional questions um, anymore, then I think we can um, close the session here. Thank you all for uh, joining. Thank you. Thank you.